Hello everyone and welcome back to my Interstellar Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this live stream on February 12th, I began by trying to import the Star Destroyer I built around Kerbin, so in the stock system, into Realism Overhaul. And as you can see, the Mark III parts got resized. I, I knew this would probably happen because the, all the stock parts are sort of resized by a factor of 1.6 to 1.7 uh, to make it more in line with Earth sizes. Uh, but you can see that the rest of the structure seems fine. The lackluster labs parts, of course, did not get resized. It's just the uh, stock parts that had that problem. The issue was, I, I thought I could fix it by using tweak scale, but the issue was that the attachment nodes weren't in the right place. The parts weren't attached in the right position, so that was a problem. Another problem you can see there in the engineer report is that the vessel mass is 2 million tons, and has a width of 12 kilometers and the height and length are also way off as well and so I started trying to pull off pieces trying to figure out which part was responsible for this mayhem and uh, of course this condemned this thing I, I didn't feel like I could just build it properly if uh, we gotta have a part that well taking it out to launch pad you can see what happens obvious glitchiness and so I tried to narrow it down to which part it was uh, in order to have some hope of rebuilding this in Realism Overhaul. And sure enough, it got down to the second to last part. And there you go. That, that part, for some reason, without it, it's 7 tons. With it, it is uh, 2 million tons. The issue here is that that part is not new, unique. Uh, the part that I had removed right before it uh, was the same kind of part, and it doesn't have anything else inside of it. So it's a puzzle why this part in particular should have ended up being 2 million tons. So I moved on to other things. Well, not completely other things, because basically here I was trying to figure out what engines I would put on a Star Destroyer uh, should I make one in Realism Overhaul. And I decided to go with Fusion. And so here you see me trying to figure out what engine would best replace the Rhino, and I picked uh, this particular engine. And then there's a magnetized target fusion reactor and I thought it looked cool is all. Uh, so the question was testing it out and it had to be tested out in space I felt uh, for it to be a proper test. Uh, here we are uh, looking at radiators. I wish I could use this umbrella radiator part but every time I try and use it, it doesn't seem to quite fit right. Uh, so I decided upon a different arrangement. Of course if we're going to test the fusion reactor we should test it on a vessel that has some purpose and here I was looking for a long-range exploration vessel and you can see me putting little hab parts on it on uh, remote tech hinges and you, you can see the reverse cupola and that's because in order to inflate those inflatable modules we need an engineer on board uh, so we need a Kerbal and I decided the best the most you know photogenic way of putting the cupola was backwards like that that will turn out to be a bad idea but anyway, uh, another purpose of this vessel, I decided, was to test out the beam, the beaming of energy technology in KSP Interstellar. And uh, I had never played around with that before, but the idea is that if you have a reactor, you can use certain dishes and uh, on the other end a receiver to beam energy from the reactor to the receiver. So you don't have to put a reactor on the probe that is receiving the energy. So that was an additional thing to test. And then on the launcher, I decided to try out these Timberwind nuclear rockets, which I believe are pebble bed reactors. I took some time to pick out a fuel to make it the optimal second stage. For the first stage, I just used Raptor sea level engines. But uh, I encountered some problems because of the backward cupola. Okay, Sigel Kerman. And yeah, I guess I'll just load it into the guidance unit. Um, we'll try and launch using the Falcon 9 script and see if that works out for us. I hope that plugging the numbers into KOS and doing it like this works. No, I haven't made a script that can land a stage yet, no. That is currently beyond me, unfortunately, our crafters. I mean, of course, we haven't put anything for this to be recoverable right now. This isn't a Falcon 9. I think it's got its radiators poking out there. I should have told them not to auto-deploy. Shoot. 
Stupid auto deploying radiators. Off the track. We don't want you breaking up. Okay, it should have already ignited. AOS. Um, undefined variable ignition time. Really? That that's why we're using KOS is because the controller is upside down. This controller isn't upside down. The controller that you see upside down is the cupola. The cupola is upside down. The guidance unit is not. The guidance unit is pointed in the right direction. And I can't reach the guidance unit here. And nobody told me a way of getting the guidance unit to be the controlling part in the VAB. I have an auto strider thing. Oh right, KJR. That took a long... Uh-oh. It bounced. And things are going wrong. Hmm. I have a bad feeling about this. Now, why did it decide to bounce in the clamps like that? And why did the fairing just randomly fall, fall off? Weight, weight reduction? Yeah, we've got KGR, so we don't need... We don't need to auto scrub, but this is weird. I appreciate that it's trying to go up, but it's not working very well. I'm guessing aerodynamics is not particularly favorable at this point in time. I'm just going to let it try. We'll see how it goes. I think it's going to flip right here. We're past the speed of sound. Uh, more things are falling off. So for those who wonder where Mike's Q is, probably around there somewhere. So in case you missed it, the reason why I thought this would work is because the guidance computer that the KOS script is loaded into is facing the right way. And I was thinking that the issue was the gimbling on the engines at this point, even though these engines have worked before. So yeah, lots of frustration, lots of attempts, and even the use of fins. I even resorted to fins in another launch. Colliding beam fusion reactor. And then there's that engine gimbling. And then the fact that we go down first. Why? Why are we going down? That was plenty of time for the engines to spool up. Well, that's not going to help things. Yeah, they are twitchy, that's why I changed the script, but we haven't loaded the modifications I made into it yet. I'd have to restart the game to do that. So I, I've tried modifying the way the gimbal works, but those haven't been loaded. Yeah, they don't gimbal smoothly. Yeah, I know. I think that's part of the problem. Ah, hey, 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 don't do that. Fins, you're supposed to point in the right direction, come on. No, the controller being backwards, uh, we would have run right into the ground if that was the problem.
it all depends on the gimbling on the second stage. Let's Or that could happen. I forgot about that. Uh, the fairing and the engine ignition were reversed. Eventually I decided that I would have to pilot myself to get to the bottom of what was going on. And of course when I say pilot myself I mean use MechJeb's Smart ASS. I removed our Kerbal from the cupola and uh, so that left the guidance computer as the only control device so it was facing the right way and uh, we will see what happens anyway now it's not backward let's see throttle up ignition and launch Okay, I guess it's because everything's backwards. Alright. <laughs> Where can I hit my head against something hard? So I replaced the uh, fancy cupola with just a lander can uh, to get on with it. We needed a hatch anyway to get to the inflatable modules. So here we go. Who knew being upside down would be a problem? Still wants to go down first though. That I still don't understand. But alright. Oh, we've got too much stuff around here. That's a lot of resources. Let's just keep it simple. So, yeah, you really can't have it backwards even if the controller is forwards. I thought you could load the program into a controller point in the right way and work. Apparently not. Apparently it doesn't matter which way the controller is, it's all about how the nav ball is oriented. It should be able to survive it, but yeah, that's not right. Okay, maybe it won't survive it. It exploded, apparently. Structural failure on linkage between payload fairing kind white and the inner stage. There was a structural failure in the inner stage. Alright, well, let's see if I can. I, I've had enough of this. Let me try and get to orbit. I guess its role is matching the music somehow. Artificial gravity? Uh, well. It would have that just by the fact that the thrust is going. It, a rolling is not how it gets artificial gravity. Well, I mean, in these habitats it would be, but that's not really how it's supposed to work. Okay, set. And ignition. Oh, it's sort of like that, huh? Is it really producing thrust, though? While well, we're accelerating. It seems very calm. Let, let me just take the RCS off, it's annoying. It's very calm in its pulsating fusion-ness. Um, this is wrong. I don't have RCS on. Oh, it doesn't have gimbling? Going like, how am I turning exactly? 
It does have, I guess it has gimbling. I hope, I hope we don't have a reaction wheel on board. Nobody had better have brought a reaction wheel. Okay, seriously though, uh, well, here, if I push kill rotation, or maybe I could just do roll zero. If it has a reaction wheel, it'll be able to kill rotation. I don't think it can. We're probably pretty far off from the moon, aren't we? So how much life support does Sigil have? Three years. I think we can make it to Mars and back. I think Sigil can make it to Mars and back. What do you think? I mean, just as a flyby mission. Assuming Infernal Robotics cooperates with us, you know. Canceling out the roll would make it look a little bit better, but I'm waiting till the... We, until we get to orbit. Missing machine. Oh, we need machinery to start greenhouse. It has a greenhouse option. Actually, all of these seem to be greenhouse thing majigs. Okay, so that is our spacecraft that I've taken forever to try and get up here. It is up here. So many things to deploy. And it's ready here. Doing stuff. Star for good modeling and texture talent. Unfortunately, I am not among those people. My space station needs to play the 1812 Overture. We need something to shoot. Well, okay. A transmit power to. Long infrared. Okay, so next thing. Can't in observatories have cannons? I think usually the observatories are receiving light, not transmitting it. But I guess you could have a dual mode observatory? I don't know. Reverse the mirror. Something like that. Salia 3 did. Okay, so we need something to transmit the power to so that I know this all works. So transmitter active. Now we need a receiver. And I need to know what to do with power that gets transmitted because I have no idea what the good of po transmitting power is right now. So, in order to test our beamed power array, I decided to create an antimatter collector probe, potentially for Jupiter, because Jupiter has a lot of antimatter potential. Uh, at the center, we have a big tank of fuel, and then the red part is the part that's going to receive the power. It basically is a stand in for the reactor that would normally have to be placed before the thermal launch nozzle, which you see at the bottom. So, it's saving us the mass of the reactor. Though, of course, it does have some mass of its own. For a launcher, I just decided to use our normal setup with the two Raptor engines at the bottom and the closed cycle gas core engine here. And it turns out that it was a little bit tight on the Delta V. What payloads, uh, if you give me, you can give me a payload or you can tell me what payload you want to put on it. You can specify the payload and I can build it or you can give me the payload uh, using stock parts and the modded parts at the bottom of the sheet. If you want some other parts, keep in mind that it's already like killing my RAM and everything. So it's gonna be a little bit hard. Acceptable size for a sun? I have no idea. No, I'm not a sound guy. You you knew all about the sound formats and everything. I thought we would get to that first. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm perplexed by the stage time thing right now. I don't know what this portends. 
I hope this receiver doesn't deploy or anything, right? Well, it's getting thermal power, okay. It's gathering thermal power. That's good. Linked for relay false. Well, we don't need to relay, we just need it to receive. But where is it receiving from? Is it receiving actually receiving anything? Satellites collected zero. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get to orbit with this. We've got way too much methane. Oh, right, we've got way too much methane. That uses methane. Wait a minute. Solution presents itself. Okay, so we need to catch up with that over there. We are over here. Uh, we've got a lot of thermal power, but I don't trust it yet because it doesn't have a connection or anything. Okay, it's good enough. Let's pump the liquid methane back up there as much as we can. And let go of that stage finally. Alright, so we should be receiving power. 2.4 megawatts only now. Well, let's see what kind of performance that gets us. It claims max acceleration 65 millimeters per second squared, but we haven't lit, lit this engine. Let's see, activate. Well now it says 7.7 .7 meters per second squared, so that's 0.8 G's. Well, let's see if we can get 0.8 G's. Yeah, that's 0.8 G's alright. Shut down. So we have a probe here that has 7,700 meters per second. And it can do 0.8 G's, which is nice, so the burn time is only 10 minutes. And it's getting power through this inline thermal receiver. At uh, about 2 megawatts. So there you have it, a successful mission to transmit power from a reactor to this probe. And so we'll have to see what we do with this particular system, but we tested quite a few things this time. I was a little bit disappointed that we couldn't get the Star Destroyer working properly, and also all the time that I took messing around just because the controller was backwards, maybe because of the cupola and everything, and KOS couldn't deal with that. But anyway, uh, stuff got done, I learned a lot and we'll see how it goes next time. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.